What is that alarm? There's like been an alarm going off the past 20 minutes I've been trying to film this. Well, it stopped. Hello there guys, it's Joel here, aka Galax, and welcome back to my YouTube channel today for a haul? No, it's not a haul. I just got one thing, <laughs> so it's definitely not a haul. I thought I'd do like a casual unboxing, because I did try and do like the whole setup thing, but because my office is still not ready, like at all, I'm not showing you the rest because it's a mess. Um, I don't have like a filming setup quite yet, but yeah, it's more like an informal unboxing of this piece because it is divine. I've not picked up a piece from Louis Vuitton since I got the white soft trunk from Virgil's first show for LV, which was inspired by The Wizard of Oz, and I love the all white soft trunk. Um, so I picked that up from the, they did a pop-up in London and it was so, so cool. I think they're doing one for, they obviously do them all the time. They're doing one at the moment in Soho in New York for this collection. I think this is Virgil's sixth collection for Louis Vuitton. I'm not sure now, but basically I haven't picked up anything since the first one. Um, Cause I just haven't been as inspired by the shows. Like this show, the Fall Winter 21 show, when the pictures came out and the video came out, I was so like in awe. And I haven't felt like that for a long time with a lot of fashion shows and like collections and presentations and stuff like that. I've not felt like super inspired by them, um, except for this one. So when um, pre-orders went up for this, I was like, I actually really want something because I love this show so much, like it's inspired me so much that I really wanted to get something to remember it by. I'm just like waffling on now. Uh, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And you can follow me over on Instagram where I post my outfits nearly every single day. I'm waffling on about this Louis Vuitton show, but you might not have seen it. So let's recap the show. Uh, so it's the Fall Winter 21 show. I've realised that I'm going to be talking like quite a lot. So I thought I'd bring the tripod over. So, oh my god, it's too high, isn't it? But basically, I know there's been a new show since um, for Spring Summer 22. And obviously this is the show that we're about to go into because it's out in shops now. I just loved everything about it. Like, they look like they're going to work, if you know what I mean. Um, and I remember reading up about it and Virgil was exploring different like masculine archetype he could like change them and fuse them together and then thinking about like the innocence of children and asking them what they want to be when they grow up and actually i tried on the varsity jacket yesterday from this collection and on the back is a really cool piece of embroidery that has like a skeleton smoking a cigarette and it says like what do you want to be when you grow up what does a doctor look like or what does an architect look like and all these like preconceived ideas we have in our head of what different professions look like in our head and it's like we made that up ourselves if you know what I mean like that's not really a thing but that's why he's playing around with it in that way um so I just thought that was a uh, really interesting uh the review on Vogue Runway says it plainly makes for Abloh's best collection for the house since he arrived in 2018 and I firmly agree with that I do think it's his best collection since his debut if you will um, they also say it's his most autobiograph autobiographical yet because it's an exploration of his African heritage of what it means to be at the pinnacle of a career in Europe as a black American creative director, um, which is also really important. He speaks about the different types of weddings that he would go to when he was younger. So for African weddings, uh, he would wear like kente cloth. Um, but when he went to American weddings, he would wear a suit. So he kind of wanted to merge those two things together and see what they would look like um, presented as something new. Abla put out a statement along with, you know, like in the show notes. Every fashion show that you go to usually has show notes, especially the bigger um, fashion houses like Dior, Louis Vuitton, uh, Balenciaga will always provide like a, the show notes of what the show is about. Um, or the designer's inspirations and stuff like that and he's put fashion has the power to deprogram these dress codes and impact possibilities and it's very very true like uh, I always see fashion as kind of an unspoken language it's like you can tell someone so much about yourself by the way that you dress and the way you present yourself um, without even saying a single word and the preconceived idea of like um, professional archetypes in that sense as well it's like you could look like uh, businessman but you might not be one but if you dress like that people will think you are one if you know what I mean and then obviously Virgil always get the short end of the stick when it comes to people like Diet Prada um, or just people accusing him of stealing things um, and 
it's well it's like a wide known fact that the fashion industry nothing is new everything is recycled someone's already done something before it's just ways of like reinventing things and putting your own stamp on them in that sense and he goes into talking about supposed ownership saying everyday objects who invented our everyday objects at one tangent there's a retort to purist critics who look down to abloh's importation of generic sweet streetwear into high fashion and then goes into like the deeper end of it as well which would be like cultures stealing from different cultures like the heritage and in his notes it says like it begs the question who like who does creation belong to and is ownership just a myth all in all it's a lot to unpack and it's a lot to think about and not only did the the meaning and the importance of the show kind of resonate with me um it also you know the clothes themselves the execution for me was perfect like i said earlier i've been not been this excited about a, a menswear fashion show in a really really long time that's why i really wanted to get a piece from this show to add to my collection because i was just so enamored by it all and i think i chose the best piece well actually <laughs> i obviously would want a lot more if you didn't know louis vuitton is not cheap um, I think my white soft trunk bag was like 3.5k. This was less than that, um, but this was still expensive. Um, I actually, so I went to uh, Harrods uh, to pick up my order yesterday. Um, my friend Will helped me source this, so a very big thanks to Will for helping me with this. Um, and then I also got to try on pieces from the collection. All the bags are great. I love like the to-go coffee cup. Um, the kind of green that is throughout the collection is really, really beautiful as well. And they did a lot of bags in that style as well. But I'm just gonna go ahead and unbox this now because I feel like I've been blabbering on for like 20 minutes. And here she is. She is beautiful. Um, so it is the mirror keep all. I don't have an LV like uh, Weekender keep all bag. Um, so I thought this would be the best time to invest in one. I was trying to decide for ages which piece to go with and I decided for the mirror keep all. Mainly because I don't have any keep alls from Louis Vuitton and I feel like they're their most like signature iconic kind of pieces. Like, I always see like the prism one from the Wizard of Oz show. Obviously you've got the classic uh, monogram and then you've got all these different versions. And I just thought this is like the most interesting version that I've seen so far that I actually really love. Um, so I thought, why not? You know, if I'm going for a weekend away, pop out the LV mirror key pole. It comes with this strap that you can attach to here as well. And it has its own unique lock. Uh, padlock which all LV keepers come with as well. It's actually coated canvas so it's not leather because I don't know if they would be able to do this kind of like mirror effect on actual leather. But it's stunning I think it's like a real great collector's piece. I'm obviously going to use it as well because I use every, everything that I purchase especially like high-end stuff I really like to get my money's worth out of it and use it. Um, but the great thing about LV stuff is that it usually like retains its value as well which is great. So that is what I picked up from LV from the Fall Winter 21 collection. I'd love to get more pieces if I could, but that was very expensive. That was a total of £3,000 for the Mirror Key Ball, um, which is, I'm not pretending like that's not a lot of money because that is a lot of money. Like, I had to think long and hard <laughs> about that before I invested in such a piece. Um, but like I said, I really, really resonated with the show and I wanted to add something to my collection and I think this is the perfect piece um mine was from harrods here in london um and i think they're beginning to roll out the fall 21 the fall winter 21 stuff from now um, but obviously mine was a pre-order so i don't know what kind of stores will have what i've always personally found luxury stores to be quite intimidating um still to this day but i feel like everyone at louis vuitton in harrods was uh, super super friendly if you go into these stores and you get kind of like a bit afraid of the shopping assistants and stuff like that because i know it can be it can be quite intimidating if you want to ask about a certain piece have a picture on your phone or if you know you can describe it go in and talk to someone and just like 
kind of get the information that you need. Um, usually shopping assistants will be very, very happy to help. Uh, it can feel sometimes like you shouldn't really be there and you're kind of like annoying <laughs> the shopping assistants. But if you're genuinely, genuinely interested in the brand or if you just want to browse, um, just talk to someone. They'll be more than happy to help. That's one positive thing I see as well from brands like LV appointing Virgil as like creative director for menswear and like Matthew Williams for Givenchy, Demna for Balenciaga. I feel like it's bringing a whole younger clientele into these high-end brands because um, they've kind of realized that they've got all the older customers because they've been shopping with them since they were younger. But if they don't adopt the younger customers now, when they're older, they won't shop there anymore. So it's like a cycle. So. They're doing the right thing by employing these like young creators and getting younger people into the store. Just being like aware of the brand. It's about making fashion more accessible to everyone, especially high-end fashion, which has such a stigma of being like bitchy, closed off, like not for everyone and stuff like that. Um, so I really applaud the fashion houses that are making everything more accessible by having TikTok accounts, Instagram, um, by getting younger people involved and more aware of their practices, stuff like that. I feel like I'm rambling now, but you know what I mean. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching my unboxing and yeah, I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.